Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another video and today we are doing something a little bit different. For those of you that do follow me on social media, you will know that I am an avid autograph collector. I have a large chunk of my autographs from the Star Wars universe and from various superheroes and movies and TV shows that I just absolutely love and I've had the privilege to either obtain these autographs through a third party um, autograph service or friends that go to these movie premieres or of course myself going to conventions and these premieres and meeting these actors for um, myself in person. When I first started collecting autographs, Star Wars was what actually started my collection and of course it holds a the biggest part of my autograph collection now. But at the time I wasn't too aware of the collectability behind it. You know, there's always that that thought in the back of your mind that what if I need to sell these one day or you know just to keep a uniform collecting habit. And at the beginning I would have a lot of my pieces personalized to me. You know, the signer would write to Alex um, character name, quote, actors, signature, you know, whatever they would add to the piece. And I realized that about 95% of my pieces were not personalized. I wasn't too sure what you know I was gonna do, should I go back and repurchase autographs from these people um, you know some of them aren't as accessible as they used to be or as cheap you know of course that happens over time so I recently started finding ways to actually remove the personalization which I didn't think was ever possible and this video will basically be a step-by-step -step guide um, and you know show a few methods that I use to remove the personalization from the pieces now when I first started doing it I just got so excited that it was actually working I didn't record the actual process of the pieces that will be shown at the end of this video in a slideshow. I have before and after photos, but I was able to find a few uh, guinea pig pieces that I marked up and I was able to use. These are just pieces that either are unsigned photos or signed pieces that I don't really have any concern over. It's better to practice on a piece or multiple pieces that I don't have any concern over losing or damaging or whatnot. And at least I can give you all um, as viewers a uh, somewhat of a variety of different aspects of how to remove them, what tools to use, what methods and what to look out for. Now, the only thing that I noticed, two things actually that I noticed on one of my pieces that I will show later on, for some reason it did not remove the autograph even though it was the same photo paper material signed at the same time as a another photo um, in the same realm. It was at Star Wars Celebration Anaheim, which, you know, again, I will discuss at the end of the video. And in another piece, um, it was a send-in offer from a Costco photo print. And for some reason, when I first started taking off the personalization, it started taking off a little bit of the actual photo ink. So I can't say why it happened. I didn't do anything different than the other pieces. But again, you know, I did mark it in the video um, for you all to see and, you know, realize what how small it was but it still made somewhat of an impact on the photo without further ado uh, let's get right into this demonstration okay folks so first we are going to start with the uh, Lou Ferrigno glossy paper photo um, and as you can see I kind of lined up which markers were used paint pens which are the pen touch Sakura and this is copper then silver then gold I believe yeah gold and we just have regular sharpie um, gold, bronze, and silver as well. And I tried to make a few other markings here um, next to the uh, copper and silver Sharpies, but they can't really be seen obviously, but you know, just did it so I can see how they do come out with the um, Expo marker. And we have like blue, green, um, red, and black there as well. So what you will need is an Expo marker. I am using blue. Um, in my experience, there hasn't been any color that caused one issue over another. And I'll also show you what happens when you use a non-Expo marker. Um, and I'm also going to be testing Gugon because I've been told that is something that also works but sometimes leaves a residue and a marking. But first and foremost, let's go ahead and use the Expo. And what you wanna do, um, make sure you have a clean Expo marker. I initially used an Expo marker that was kind of older, dried out, and pretty much used up. And But it still, it still worked, but the problem was because it had been blended with so many other colors, it was leaving more of a mark. The Expo, a clean Expo is what will work best. So I usually just go slowly in little swivels or circles around the area and get a clean cloth and wipe it off. Now, as you can see, the cloth has been used quite a bit, but that's no worries. You know, other people in the autograph collecting world that you can use a Expo dry erase marker. I unfortunately don't have one. Um, I do have some other erasers that have also just been used too much. So I just went ahead and grabbed a soft cloth. Um, I think I saw a tag on this one. This is just a regular dust off cloth, um, but any soft cloth will do. And as you can see, it 
it was able to come off right away. So I'll keep going with that, you know, just slowly swiveling around, grab it. So it might be a little painstaking, um, you know, but it's something that you want to take your time with to make sure that it um, comes off cleanly. And I will move on to the silver. And you don't want to press down too hard, but you know, you don't want to make an indent in the um, picture or the photo that you are doing. And as you do this, I'm not sure how well the camera will pick it up, but you will actually see the Sharpie being um, almost erased or lifted off into the ink of the Expo marker. And let me move on to the next color here. So these are the paint pens that were removed. Let me go ahead and move on to the Sharpies. And the Sharpies do come off a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. There we go. And as you can also see that I am doing them in small portions and erasing them pretty fast. In a moment, actually, let me, yeah, I'll go ahead and try it now and let me just switch to the black, or no, blue, blue will look better. Um, on one of the pictures, I actually didn't erase it fast enough and the Expo marker dried on. Now, how I fixed that, I went over it with the same Expo marker and it was able to come off. So let me go back to um, the paint pen and do a little portion. And I'll just leave that for a moment. And I actually did not do it on the gloss photo, so I'm not sure if it will dry up the same, but let me go ahead and try to wipe it off now. And okay, so it still came off, so it might just be the gloss. Um, I will go ahead and try it one more time and actually leave it on for a little bit longer. So the video might jump a little bit. Okay, let's see if it'll come off now. Okay, so it still came off, so I'm thinking it might be with the gloss photo, um, you can wait a little bit longer, but I don't recommend that. Um, let me go ahead and do the black on some of the darker Sharpie colors. And again, comes right off. Now, this is a pretty old photo, so it did have some scratches on it. Um, you know, you can see some spots do have a little bit of residue, and again, it just depends on the quality of the picture, the time and, um, thickness of the Sharpie or paint pen that was used. As you can see over here, I can't remember what I used first on this piece. Um, this was my guinea pig in the first place, but it left a little bit of residue. And on some of the other pieces, I was able to simply go over it again with the Expo and get rid of that residue as well. So I haven't tried it here yet, but let me go ahead and try it on camera for the first time. And if you can see that, it did come off pretty nicely. So you can kind of see the white residue coming off and then the gloss returning. Kind of looking at it, it doesn't leave any feeling and depending on the angle it might look like scratches but again this is an old photo so it wasn't of the best quality. Now I also tried to do this with non-Expo markers. Um, I initially thought okay well Expo is just a brand so what makes it different? When I tried it I used a I think I used this one. It's just a general dry erase chisel marker and it did not work. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it now and see what results of it. Again, just doing the same. And would you look at that? It did come off. So I would recommend trying to stick to Expo um, only because I might have tried the non-Expo marker on a luster or a matte photo. Um, but so far, you know, as you just saw, it worked on the paint pen. And let me try it on the Sharpie, and the Sharpie worked as well. So let me go ahead and try another brand. This is the Marker Board People Low Ultra Low Order Dry Erase Marker. And let me try it here. And that worked as well. As you can see, I guess any dry erase marker should work. It might depend on the photo, but now that I kind of look at it, it did leave a slightly harder or thicker residue on the um, last dry erase marker but again you know if it's something that is removing personalization depending how old it is um, it can't be expected to be a perfect result. Let me go ahead and try the Goo Gone and with that I'm gonna put a little bit of it um, you know just regular Goo Gone put a little bit in the plate right here and dip some of or dip the um, Q-tip in it and see how this goes. Now I've never tried this so it will be my very first time trying this on camera um, just put a little bit on the Q-tip. And you can see there, the copper is kind of coming up. And what do you know? It worked pretty nicely. You can see a little bit of the residue on the Q-tip itself. 
So let me try and see what happens there. So it might be from the residue of the other ink, but nope, doesn't seem to be working on this color. So I'm not sure if it depends on the color or what. Um, let me try the clean side on a Sharpie. There we go. Okay, so yeah, it, it seems like everything is just a trial and error um, when I tried it on the first paint, but then the Sharpie um, worked fine as well. So let me just go ahead and return back to all of these and get the entire Sharpie off. And would you look at that, now none of that is coming off. So very interesting how this changes so fast. And that one is working fine. It could also be because of the residue from the Goo Gone that it did not work just now. And there might be some stubborn portions that you have to go over a few times. Definitely take your time. Do not rush this process if you have a personalized piece or you need to clean up an autograph that maybe got smeared or ruined um, in the process. But definitely take your time and that is the biggest advice I can give. Taking your time and patience will save you more than the marker itself. I don't think I mentioned, but I initially marked these about a week ago now. So these have been sitting for about a week. Um, and this is the result. Let me just go over here again. So there is the quick demonstration on the gloss paper. Now let's move on to the luster photo. So here is the luster printed photo from Costco. Um, again, I used all the paint pens, all like the Sharpie colors. Um, I also used a green Sharpie here. So as you can see what I was um, thinking would happen, there's a slight reddish um, residue and I'm gonna keep going over that and see if it will come off. And again, slowly but surely it will come off and it kind of turned into a very faint pink. Let me try that. And oh, would you look at that, the neon does not seem to be coming off. Oh, well it will, but not too easily and it's kind of interfering with the Expo as well. Let me try a different color Expo. And I think that was the only neon color I had. So yeah, the neon colors will definitely give you a hard time. And let me try another bright color, the orange here. So it might just depend on the actual shade or maybe if I'm moving a little too fast and the residue is slowly but surely coming off. Let me try the blue on blue. Yeah, it's coming off. Um, let me move over to the silver here. The copper. A um, little bit thicker portion right here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, move down here. A little bit more of a contrast. And yeah, it seems like the contra high contrast areas might be a little bit more difficult. Let me go ahead and try it with the non-expo marker. And what I will try now to, um, let me go ahead and leave this on for a little bit and see what results of it. And I'll go ahead and try it with the purple as well to get a different idea of it. So just a few seconds didn't seem to hurt it. Let me go ahead and leave the Expo marker on for a little bit. And I'll try, let's see, I'll try the neon again. There we go. And 
and taking these guys off. So yeah, as you can see, the Expo did dry up a little bit over the neon, but not on that one. So let me just grab it and remove that. And like I said, the Expo will erase the Expo um, part itself. So now let me go ahead and try the Gugon and get a clean Q-tip and see how that works. Let me try one of these. Nope, doesn't seem to work too well. Let's see on this one. Oh, that came off nicely. Now, unfortunately, I cannot remember if this was the black paint pen or black Sharpie. I wanna say that's the paint pen, that's the Sharpie, so this might be a paint pen as well. So you might have different results depending on the type of pen used. And it looks like it, Gugon does not work very well on the Sharpies. Let me go over here. And this is just, I accidentally scratched it from the um, paint pen when I was trying to mark it, so don't mind that. Let me get another clean part of that. Let me go over here. Yeah, so Gugon is usually a hit or miss. Um, it seems to kind of work better, but kind of not. Um, I'm not seeing any residue left from it. It might be something that takes time to um, appear or if you use too much of it, or it might leave a odor, which I've also been told. But as you can see, it came off, you know, kind of a hit or miss. So let me do a big part of this to show you what happens. Oh, and there we go, marking up the entire photo. So do be careful with that as well. Let me go ahead. And that is also something you want to be careful of um, when you have a thicker dry erase marker and you're just going over it and then, you know, leaving that residue. So definitely be careful with that. And like I said, I'm just moving faster for the video purposes. And as you can see, you know, it didn't really work on the paint pen. Let me go ahead and do a small portion. And that does not seem to be coming off with the regular marker. Let me move back to the Expo real quick. And that seems to be drying up, but it did catch a little bit of it. There we go. Yeah, so slowly but surely, you know, it does come off. Um, let me try to find a residue area and get that cleaned up. So that was just some of the residue left behind from the other uh, marker. And I haven't tried too much on the contrasting area. So the color composition might make things difficult or easier for you. And of course the photo type of pen, the cloth you use, um, this kind of got a little dirty, so I'm moving over. So, you know, just some demonstration for that. Now, let me go ahead and move on to the next item, which is a comic book. Now, I did not get this signed. Um, this was delivered to me in a grab bag and I don't read this book. I don't have, I have no idea who signed it. So I can really care less. So what is another guinea pig for us to use? Let's start with the non-expo marker and see how that works. And to be fair, I have no idea when this was signed. Um, I don't know, I'm assuming this is all Sharpie being used. The signatures are here and then I'm marked and here and I marked these two areas with um, paint pen. So let me go ahead and get that. And this is also just a regular um, comic book, nothing special about the paper or the quality in it. Um, it's just a modern comic book with the paper. I'm not sure it's kind of glossy, I guess, but that is how it is. And it looks like the paint pen is not coming off there, but it did come off here. Let me go back to the Expo marker and see how that works. And again, slowly but surely it will be coming off here. See how this Gugon works now in this part. And Gugon doesn't seem to be working either. Let me try it on the paint pen. Nope, getting just going hog wild with it now. 
Yeah, so that just goes back to my point that it depends on the paper that's being used, the type of pen. Um, it doesn't seem like it's working anywhere. I'm gonna go a little bit crazy and just pour some of this goo gone. Uh, right there and right there. And let's see if we can get it off with... Nope, and nope. Yeah, so it might just be the... Um... Oh, well this one worked. There we go, so, you know, that decided to work and not the rest. And slowly, slowly. No, I don't wanna, oh, not that it matters, but. And look, oh, that one came off fairly easily. Um, I don't know if that was a Sharpie or not, but yeah, as you can see, it kind of worked, kind of didn't. If you can get that picture. So there we have it. Now let me go ahead and pull out a picture that did not work for some reason and I'll compare it to another one. Um, it will be in the slideshow as well, but just so we can have it shown here. So in the slideshow you will see a picture of Shock T from Attack of the Clones signed by Orly Shoshan. And this is it, and there will be a before photo that had two Alex up here in the corner. This was obtained at Star Wars Celebration Anaheim 2015. It is the same exact paper as this one. Amy Allen signed um, Ayla Sakura again to Alex. For some reason, the Expo marker or any of the other whiteboard markers did not do anything to this. I do not want to try the Gugon only because Granted, the residue didn't seem to happen on the other photos. Um, I actually like this photo, so I want to avoid any possible um, damage to it. But for some odd reason, of the multiple photos, I erased the um, personalization, whether it was, a, I guess, luster like this or gloss or matte. It worked, and this was the only one that did not work. So I can't tell you why. I mean, it was Sharpie. It was signed at the same time, the same, probably the same day even. Um, but for some reason it just did not work. So let me try it one more time on camera and see what happens as a result. Let me just do a small portion here with the black which doesn't seem to be working. And as you can see it did not do anything. Let me try the blue. Oh, wait, is it gonna work this time? Uh, the blue kind of worked. At least I'm just doing the comma now, so worst case scenario. It's kind of fading the um, comma, but that is about it. So it's definitely the more painstaking photo that I have for whatever reason. Again, same photo as the others, same Sharpie, or at least, you know, the same brand. They were stored the same. Um, neither of them were framed. Neither of them were in sunlight. Just trying to think of all the possible reasons behind it. And, you know, slowly but surely it did come off. Now, because it is taking so long, um, I, you know, as I have mentioned before, it is a patient process, but I don't know, you know, if it took that long and there's still a slight outline, I would rather not do it to the rest because it's such a big, um, you know, big signed area. I, I am okay leaving this with my name and maybe in the future I will try it again. But for now, I will leave it as is. All right, so now I'll go ahead and play the um, slideshow of the before and after photos. So if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, thank you all for watching and I wish you the best of luck.